Hello YouTube friends. Did you like that introduction that I've just put up there? Uh, it's Sunday afternoon, about four o'clock, and I've just got back from seeing Star Wars. The uh, last in the proper nine of the Star Wars is. Uh, and um, literally half an hour ago, John and I went to see it. Uh, he's been to see it already and uh, I really wanted to go. So he said he'd like to go again. Because uh, you always see something again, don't you, the second time that you um, that you watch something. So I'm going to sit here and chat with you guys um, about nothing in particular <laughs> because I'm working on, whoopsie daisy, I'm working on this at the moment. I'll give you a proper look. This is, uh, I, I think some of you may remember, I actually had all these hexagons made. Here they are in this basket. I've got loads of these base hexagons made in greens and blues, which are two colours that I really like. And I'm just sewing these together at night when I'm sitting watching the TV, if I haven't got any knitting on the go. And so I'm not sure if this is apparent, but I'm doing sort of dark blobs and then lighter blobs and then blue and green. And But so as I pick each new hexagon up, you know, I'm in no particular, uh, with no rhyme or reason, I'm kind of seeing where it fits and it's growing like an amorphous blob from the middle. I have a plan for this. I think it's going to end up being for Agnes at some point in the future. But for now, I'm really enjoying the organic way in which it's growing. And so I've got these hexagons in my little basket here, but every time I picked one up now, I wasn't finding there was enough variety. So I've just cut, just got back from the cinema. I've just cut a load more pieces of fabric from my big um, scrap bucket here. And I'm going to sit and sew these onto my hexagons here. So I've got my paper, I'm doing English paper piecing. You know what I'm doing. I've got my papers here. Where did that go? There it is. Uh, and this one, these are ones that have been used before. You can see the holes in them there, but they're perfectly fine to use again. They've got, probably got another couple of journeys in them before they um, before they get d dumped. And so the way that I'm going to do this, you've seen me do this before and you know how to do this. Uh, I'm going to use red thread so that I can see it really easily when I'm coming to take it out at the end of this project. I don't need that much though. OK, so I'll thread this up then and then we'll uh, and now just like when I talked about going to see Little Women. No spoilers at all from me about Star Wars. I mean, you really couldn't get two more different film genres, could you? Little Women, Star Wars. <laughs> but I like them both because I really like film very, very much. And so I'll just stick a knot in the end of this. And, you know, if you're interested, I'll show you what I'm doing with the first one. This is some lovely uh, fabric um, here and this one and this one and one more. Uh, uh, these were very kindly sent to me when somebody saw me doing this green and um, blue hexagon thing. She said, oh, I've got these. I think they'd probably look better in your in your project. So that was sweet. Thank you. Uh, so I put the hexagon in the middle like so uh, and I cut these out on my Sizzix machine. We'll get into all of that at some point. This is not a tutorial on that kind of thing today because uh, I want to talk about films. <laughs> and then I'm going to fold the first bit over like that and then just basically put a nice big knot in the end and I'm going to stitch my way all the way around while I talk to you guys. Uh, there are some tutorials um, well, there are many, many tutorials on YouTube about how to do English paper piecing, but I've also done them as well here. In fact, there was the one about making Agnes a little fabric ball, wasn't there? That was a very detailed one. So if I remember, I'll put an eye card up here. I sometimes forget about the eye cards and then a few weeks later, someone will ask me a question. I think oh, I forgot the eye card. So I'm going to try and remember it. There's a, um, a much more in-depth tutorial about English paper piecing up here if you if you pop on that I can't do it that my specs on if you pop up there and, and have a look at making Agnes's little fabric ball in the series sewing for baby okay then so so John and I agreed that we would go to see Star Wars 
today, but in the daytime. Uh, it just means that, you know, it's not so late and you don't come home all tired and needing food. Uh, and so, as I say, we've just got back. He's gone home. Um, and I really enjoyed it. So for, for Star Wars aficionados, there were the original three, which were actually four, five and six. Then they made one, two and three retrospectively which were, I think, universally, I think people think that they weren't great, and they weren't. And now they've made three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, and this was nine. This was nine. Now, of course, um, George Lucas, who started out this with, you know, no real budget and no real kind of, it wasn't as massive as it is now when he started out, you know, there was Luke and, and Han and Leia, you know, zipping around the galaxy with that great big Wookiee. <laughs> um, when you look at those now, they look very naive. Uh, I like that. I like that. However, there were some genius elements. Getting John Williams to score it. Um, where's my... Oh, all my hexagons are in here. So the music's amazing. And so I just need to say Star Wars to you. And if you, even if you're not a fan, you'll be humming away at the music. Maybe not. So if you, <laughs> maybe I'll put a timestamp in here for when I stop talking about Star Wars and you can zoom straight to that. <laughs> so, so, yeah, there's loads to criticise about it and there are loads of critics out there. But when I sit in a cinema seat, I can suspend my critical judgment and just be entertained. I, I don't know. I've always been able to do that. And so although... There's a huge amount of war and violence and and you know blasting people with blasters and all of that and blowing up blowing up spaceships that have got people in them. <laughs> and if you stop to analyze that, yes, it's very brutal and so on. But if you see it as just the fantasy um, thing that it is, so this one was the resolution of the whole thing, and for fans like me and John. There needed to be enough reference to the original films uh, for us to go, oh, yeah, look, there's him. And oh, I remember that. There needed to be enough of that for us to enjoy it, but also a good story. I came back thoroughly enjoying it and humming away to uh, Star Wars. In fact, while I've been getting all this ready, I've been playing the music on my computer. So there you go, uh, Star Wars. It was, I've been looking forward to it ever since John and I decided we would go. It was a nice thing to do with a Sunday afternoon, so that was good. Right, you, you can come back now, all <laughs> you Star Wars um, haters. <laughs> I just like film. You know, one of my favourite places to be is in a cinema seat, watching a good movie. And, you know, it doesn't actually have to be that good. <laughs> So I will see Star Wars again, probably, and I will see Little Women again because I do like to see movies a couple of times because you, you like John, has just been back today for a second time. You miss stuff. So you want to go and see them again. So that's, that's that. That was really nice. What else have I been doing this week? I'm really excited to be back with this again. So it just sits by the... Um, on the sofa next to me there with everything I need, which is the spare hexagons um the thread and some scissors and a needle and i just and my thimble and i can just stitch away when i'm watching tv uh, of an evening because that's my habit i guess in the winter time is to get a nice fire lit and sit and watch something something or other and so what i have been enjoying i mean we're sublime and ridiculous here with the things that i've been enjoying watching but the anne of green gables adaptation which is on netflix uh, I don't know if, if you are Netflix subscribers or if you like uh, Anne of Green Gables, but this particular adaptation, I've enjoyed it. It's called Anne with an E. And the Anne who plays the part of Anne, of Anne in, in this one, and there's, you know, there's um, all the other characters that you're familiar with, Matthew and Marilla and Diana and all those people and Gilbert. And they're well played Anne is totally, completely and utterly over the top, over the top. Uh, and that's how I think that's how she was written. I think that's how she's meant to be 
you know, anybody less passionate and less sort of fiery and red haired probably, you know, wouldn't play the part as well. So the third season and final season is uh, is out on Netflix now and I'm really enjoying watching my way through that. So that's my movie. It's not like I sit and watch films and TV all the time. But in the wintertime, fire on, a bit of stitch, hand stitching or, or knitting or whatever. <laughs> that's good. So that's uh, that's uh, all the media stuff covered there. <laughs> what else have I been doing this week? But I spent the beginning part of the week, mind you, no, it's been a funny week because it, it didn't have a beginning, did it? Because it had New Year right in the middle of it. OK, well, I spent the couple of days after New Year's Day up in Pink HQ uh, because I told you about the... Um, the January sale in the shop and loads of you piled over there and I've sold out of lavender bags completely now which is brilliant I'm starting to think about what new things I might make for the shop which is exciting it's good there are still some calendars left not many just a few and they're on a bit of a reduction now that we've started January uh, which is nice so and then there are as well uh, there are some um, packs of cards that I've put, um, I've, I've done a big reduction on the packs of cards and they'll go back to normal in February. So that's what's going on in the shop. But I did spend the first part of the new year, I guess. New Year's Day must have been Wednesday. So I spent Thursday then packing and, <laughs> and um, popping backwards and forwards to the post office. So that's nice. That's over in the shop. Um, what else has been going on? That's kept me pretty busy. The other thing that has um, now, I think, resolved, finished, is all the new reward tiers that are happening over on Patreon. I, uh, it's quite new. And so the people who are helping me, which is my daughter-in-law, um, um, all my extended family who are helping me, uh, we've pretty much got it to the point now where we can print them. In subsequent months, the printing will happen earlier. But like I say, this is the first um, experimental time that we're doing this. So those things will be ready, uh, hopefully, by the end of this week coming. And I'll, uh, I'm, I'm excited about that. It means I get to go and see the printers again, which is good. Uh, so that will be excellent. So I've been spending quite a lot of time uh, tweaking that, you know, behind the scenes kind of tweaking. Um, and then, oops, a daisy. Oh, see, that, that one came unthreaded before I'd done the second stitch. I'll have to do it, otherwise it'll come undone. So the other thing that I've been <laughs> talking about and thinking about, I'm making a couple of quilt commissions, one for January and one for February. And the January person and I have started talking about what it is I'm going to do and the colours we're going to use and the pattern and so on. And so I'm excited about that one. So I'll ask her if it's all right if I film it and then, uh, but I won't show, I won't put the videos up until she's got the quilt so that she's the first one who sees it. That's how I like to do it. So I will, if, if she's okay with me doing that, I'll film the making of that one. It's going to be a really interesting one, I think. Because uh, I like to do this kind of work in collaboration with the person I'm making it for. In fact, I'm going to tell you about one that I made last year. Uh, October, I think it was, I made this one. And so I'll tell you about that one. And I'm going to put a couple of pictures in here um, of that quilt. It was a trip around the world quilt. This next one I'm making isn't. Uh, but the trip around the world quilt is one I like to make. Because you can actually play with the design of that uh, to really, uh, it's really interesting how the, the placement of the fabrics in that block can make for a completely different feel. Now, last year, somebody asked me to make a trip around the world quilt and the colours they wanted, uh, it was absolutely lovely. Because um, you know me, I'm used to working in really, really bright, zappy colours. But this one, the colours where um, the colours of 
a winter and spring in Northumberland. What a lovely remit that was. So that was what I was asked to do. I was asked to make a quilt that would reflect the the grey winter skies, the snow maybe, the fog, the mist, the dry stone walls, but then the clear blue skies and the promise of spring with the first crocuses and aconites popping through. So with all of this lot going around in my head, I collected together the fabrics for that one. Now, the person who commissioned it is actually uh, lives in New York State and is friends with the Hercules Candy tribe. And I'm going to put this amazing picture in here that he took. I'm sure he won't mind. I'm going to put this picture in that he took uh, when he, he took the quilt to Hercules. And here are all the Hercules crew with the quilt. <laughs> See what you think about the colours I've just described and whether you think I got that right. I was pleased with it. It was probably a bit lighter and a bit more yellow than um, than the remit suggested, but I quite like the idea of the spring part of it. And then the dry stone walls, because we were talking, weren't we, about dry stone walls last time and uh, how the dry stone walls crisscross the countryside here up in the north of England and actually all over. Little break there because the phone just went and <laughs> it was a nice little chat with Anna about some work that she and I are doing. She's made a quilt for her friend's baby and um, she's been making it for a while now. It's been on the back wall, you might have seen it. It's lovely sort of autumnal colours. It's really beautiful. Well, she's finished quilting it and on Tuesday she's going to come and put the binding on. So she's just been phoning me up about that, which is nice. So I'll see her on Tuesday. So I can't remember where I was now, but I think I was telling you about the Hercules candy uh, people and the quilt that I made for this guy and whether or not um, we think that I hit the remit on that one. So this next one is um, my favourite uh, dual colours, blues, greens and all of those things. And um, we're going to be working reds, pinks, all of that. We're going to be working the customer and I towards getting the design for that one ready. So I guess you won't see the film for that until February. Uh, but that's OK. <laughs> uh, good. What else? Uh, what else have we done this week? So it's the, I don't know quite what the date is, but soon it'll be Twelfth Night, which is the day that you take your Christmas trees down. My Christmas tree is still up there, but if you remember, we bought a living Christmas tree and decorated that. So I'll undecorate that soon, but I'm quite enjoying it still. But Martha and Adam and John and Anna had a, an ordinary Christmas tree, a cut, a cut one, you know, and they decided that we would have uh, a Christmas tree bonfire uh, where we burnt the, the dead Christmas trees and had some lovely bonfire food. It was really, really nice. So this coming week then is the first full week of January. Uh, lots to do. I've got lots of plans and things that, of things that I want to make and things that I want to do. Uh, and so I'm going to be making a start on those. So I'm just going to carry on sewing hexagons then. So that I've got a nice variety to go up when I'm sewing uh, by the TV. I'm going to find something nice to have for my supper. Edit this and put this up. So I hope you're having a nice Sunday, whatever you're doing. If you want to subscribe, that would be gorgeous. If you want to put a like or a comment or a share, whatever, all of those things that people do, that would be gorgeous too. You're very, very welcome. I sometimes look down this huge sofa that you're all sitting on and think it's probably time to put the virtual kettle on and refresh those pots of tea. So come on, shuft, shuft up a bit and let a few more people onto the sofa and keep passing the biscuits down. <laughs> okay, that's the one. I'm going to stop there now and do a bit of editing of this. Thank you very much and I'll see you next time. Got some great plans for what's coming next.